What's up, Chuck? Ah, uh, Moraba, what is happening? What 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 happened to Neil? What did you do with Neil? Did you well, put you know, did you put Neil in low Earth orbit, bro? <laughs> what did I you think, do? Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think I think Neil is 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 somewhere between here and the moon, okay. um, <laughs> or, or orbiting around, and uh, yeah. Today we're gonna do an explainer video together, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Well, hopefully it'll be something about all of the uh, things that are floating around this planet, making our front yard look like that we we belong in a, how shall I put it a lower economic neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's we've already heard about Elon and SpaceX launching all these satellites, the Starlinks, to provide global internet. And in fact, uh, these things have been providing internet in Ukraine, which is kind of a key thing. So, so, so it's been a good thing that these things have been on orbit. So let me ask you before you go any further, because you're talking about Starlink, because I don't really know that much about it. I do know about, I heard about the, the launch and the satellites being deployed, but what is the benefit of having all of these satellites? Because we have internet right now. So what's the benefit of having all these tiny little satellites all over the place? Yeah, so that's a great question. So the benefit of the satellites is that even though you and I have internet here in the US and it's almost like ubiquitous, there's actually many regions around the globe that have zero internet whatsoever, nothing. Gotcha. And, and, so, and so, so if we want to get knowledge and I know Neil kind of cares about this thing, and so do you. If we want to get knowledge to be ubiquitous across humanity, the internet is a great way to, to do that. And from space, if we can have all these satellites providing this internet, then, you know, in theory, there's no part of the globe that would be without internet. And is that a direct link, this Starlink? Is it like, I don't have to go through uh, some kind of ISP or something like that? Uh, I'm just getting directly beamed down, like Elon Musk is beaming me the signal or is it something different? No, yeah, so Elon uh, is beaming you the signal and you wow. do have to have some equipment right. uh, to, to receive it. But, but yeah, as long as you have a receiver, you can get the internet. Oh, wow, okay. That actually is kind of important. <laughs> It, I, let me tell you something. I love hating on Elon Musk. I love hating on all of them, to be honest. I can't. I got. I can't lie. Okay. But I, you know, that's that's actually kind of a good thing. Absolutely. And so, I mean, you know, we could be in the middle of nowhere. I don't know, somewhere in the Serengeti. We're we're we're, we're just chilling out uh, by lions, and we could have one of these receivers, and we could have like internet there, right? So it, okay, that, it's like a sat phone, but for is. the internet. Exactly. Wow. Okay. That's, I mean, so, so, so now what's going on then that, that, cause so far I, I know that you have a problem with stuff in space. So, I mean, this seems like a good reason to put stuff in space. So what's up? <laughs> yeah. So look, there's a good reason to put stuff in space. The thing that hasn't been so good is that people are just launching stuff without coordinating with other people. The traffic is increasing. We don't have traffic rules. So that's the part that's not so good, right? Um, but but so far it's been the Elon Musk show when it comes to the, you know, the internet from space until now. Because okay. now, turns out that Jeff Bezos from Amazon, he's gonna have his own satellite system providing internet called Kuiper. Uh-oh. Okay, now I see what we're talking about here. So now we got another billionaire. Let's measure how big our dinglings are. Space race, okay? Pardon me, anybody who's listening. I, Look, I, I, I mean, was about when, to say something much worse, but well, you know, when it comes to dinglings, uh, yeah, certainly it's like uh, you know now Jeff is gonna jump into this, and I mean Elon proposed like ten thousand satellites, which is a whole shed load of satellites right, right, right. um and and now jeff wants to put about 3200 um you know satellites in the same kind of orbital altitude as elon which means okay now you got elon traffic you got junk that's just kind of kind of you know, floating it, around it, right? that's right and now you're gonna you know layer and on now top you got of that. bezos traffic bezos mess and then, of course, Richard Branson will have to get involved. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting for it to hear that, right? Right. Yeah, because that's, I mean, honestly, they're the holy trinity of um, 
a holism. Okay, like that's. You know, if, if if there's a holy trinity of a holes, it's those three guys and space. You know, uh, however, I think it's a great thing that they actually did kind of spark a, a lot of interest in space with what they did. I just think it was kind of worthless. I don't know. Maybe, well, I, don't know. I mean, look, uh, certainly, again, you know, when I look at people across the world and lack of knowledge that some of them have, it's a good thing for everybody to be as knowledgeable and have as much information about stuff as possible, I think. Because when not, you don't- Not to mention porn. Ex well, you know, you could go with that, right? So that, <laughs> that, that, that is certainly information. I don't, look, I, 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 I want to be the last that person- That is certainly information. That's right. I don't want to be the last person like preventing people from getting access to, to these sorts of, you know, libido sort of uh, uh, data, but- um, but yeah, I mean, um, I think knowledge is definitely uneven across humanity and the people that have more of it are trying to exert influence and power, uh, dominance over the ones that don't. So I think that kind of leveling the playing field with information, I think that's a good thing. And, you know, these satellites will help, you know, do that. Okay. Well, you got me thinking now more, but if you're going to do something that could possibly be detrimental that you should also be doing something that offsets that detriment. Booyah! Yep. Like, if you're shooting crap in the space, you should be giving us money so that we can pull crap out of space. That would make sense, right? Right, yeah. So, so what, what is happening? <laughs> like, is there anything like that? Well, the answer is no, not so much. Uh, there should be, and what you said makes complete sense, but so far, it's mostly, okay, uh, I can put some stuff up there, and there's this idea of this 25-year rule of, um, which isn't like law, it's just like a suggestion, hey, by the way, um, after your stuff stops working, make sure that it's not there 25 years after the thing dies, which is a long time. So first of all, that is a long time, especially when we keep shooting crap up there. But more importantly, that's a great rule, but how? I mean, you can tell people to do whatever you want, but you gotta have some way to make that happen. Exactly, and to, to me, to me, that's kind of like the Jedi mind trick, right? Those aren't the droids you're looking for. That's not the space debris that I left up there sort of thing. It's like, right. yeah. We gotta have enforcement, man. We we gotta make this into a law somehow. And the 25 year thing is like too long. We need it to be much shorter than that. And I fully agree with you. It's like, if you're gonna be licensed to launch some stuff up there, it, it provides a service. You're gonna make some money while at it, which is nothing wrong with that. But it's like, clean the stuff up once you're done. So now let me ask you about these satellites. I don't know if this is something you would know or not. Are they maneuverable? I mean, can they get out of the way because the last time we talked, man, I'm telling you, I still haven't recovered from the amount of crap that you said that's up there. And then the size of some of it that we're tracking. And I'm just thinking like, okay, what about like the nuts and bolts that might come off of stuff? That could be the disaster that starts the, you know, dominoes falling. So can, can these satellites get out of the way? Yeah. So you know, Elon stuff, they have uh, thrusters on them so they can like move around all the time. And, um, you know, the, the Kuiper satellites uh, from Amazon, they'll have thrusters as well, for sure. And I have to tell you, I've, I've, I know some of these people personally, uh, colleagues dating back, uh, you know, decades. I've spoken to them about this sort of stuff. The cool thing is they de definitely seem on the up and up to be behaving in a way that's long-term sustainable and ecologically friendly when it comes to removing stuff. And so I know that the Kuiper people have plans of deorbiting much sooner and that sort of thing, man. So, so that's the good news. But yeah, they can, they, they, they can move out of the way. The thing is, uh, how well can you predict when things are gonna crisscross each other? Uh, do you, yeah, do you, do you know that you have to move out of the way? That's the thing that's tough. Right, right. So you need like a air traffic, con a space traffic controller, not an air traffic controller because there's no air in space, but a space traffic controller also, here's my next question. Are these things small enough that if you just crashed them into the atmosphere, we don't have to worry about them? 
Yeah. So so the thing is, you know, if you if you basically use some fuel to deorbit these things so that they kind of go steeply into the atmosphere and burn up, chances are they're not going to survive reentry. They will burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, so it's still scary to think about 3,200 things being shot and deployed. And then uh, what's what's Musk? How many is he doing? He wants 10,000. And 10,000. Of course, that that makes sense because he's like, I'm Elon Musk. Like, you remember you were talking about dinglings, man. So yeah, you exactly. got uh... right. By the way, you know, Bezos has got to come up now. You know, that's there's no way that he's going to just do 32 if Musk has 10,000. Hey, you know? hey, man, here's what I hear, Chuck. It's what you do with a satellite that matters. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's not the size of the satellite. It's the gravity in the depravity. <laughs> I don't know what that means or where it came from. You know, but it sounds, it's, no, it's, it's, it's good. I, it, it, I like it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. So what is your prediction for this outcome? Because the stuff is going to go up there. What exactly, what should we, me and all the people, what should we be worried about? I mean, or yeah. what should we do? Because this could really mess things up. Yeah, it could really mess things up. And the thing is, you know, there is the potential for one of Elon's satellites to actually collide with one of Jeff Bezos' satellites, that would be horrible for a variety of reasons. So yeah, I mean, I think the thing that we need to be concerned about is if, we, if we're saying that global internet is a good thing, everybody should have access to information, <clears throat> and these satellites provide it in a unique way, cool. Um, how do we make sure that that is a long-term thing that can be maintained and not to the detriment of the environment? So I think that's the thing that we need to be concerned about these things bumping into, into each other, people keeping on launching stuff with this kind of risk uh, that these things could collide and then pollute the rest of the environment, like you said, nuts and bolts and like become uh, many, many shards. So these are things that we definitely should be worried about, for sure. All right. Hey, man. Well, I have to tell you that I always love speaking to you. And every time you're done, I feel worse. <laughs> well, well, look, man, I, I, I'm like the Oracle in, in, in the Matrix, right? It's like I got nothing but bad news, but but here's a cookie and may, maybe you'll feel better. I love talking to you, Chuck, as well, all the time, brother. It's good. All right, man. <laughs> so, Chuck and everybody else, there you have it. A quick explainer on this new internet uh, from space with uh, Jeff Bezos and Project Kuiper from Amazon. And uh, my name's Morbidja, and... Uh, Keep on space travel. <laughs>